Welcome to One Minute to Midnight. I'm Wilfred Cunningham. On the 27th of May, Ronaldo Bignone was sentenced to 20 years in jail by a court in Buenos Aires for his part in Operation Condor, an international effort to assassinate dissidents conducted by nine South American countries in the 1970s and the 1980s. Bignone was president of Argentina from the 1st of July 1982 until the 10th of December 1983, serving as head of a military junta that had ruled Argentina since it overthrew Isabel Perón in a coup d'etat on the 24th of March 1976. Toward the end of his rule, Bignone helped facilitate the transition back to democracy. But his role under previous juntas saw him responsible for thousands of deaths. Bignone was born on the 21st of January 1928 and joined the Argentinian army in 1947. By 1975, he was a brigadier general and one of the protégés of General Jorge Bedella, who made Bignone secretary of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Under a climate of domestic terrorism and economic stagnation, Bedella, alongside Admiral Emilio Messera and Brigadier General Orlando Agosti, overthrew the government of Isabel Perón, and Bignone was an important, although perhaps not central, part of the new military junta's consolidation of power. Within days of the junta coming to power, soldiers reporting to Bignone detained staff thought to be connected to leftist causes from Posadas de Jairo, a Buenos Aires hospital. Three of those detained remain unaccounted for. Bignone then became the head of a detention centre in Campo de Mayo, on the outskirts of Buenos Aires. The army base reportedly contained four such secret centres between 1972 and 1976 and only around 50 of an estimated 4,000 detainees survived being imprisoned there. Videla handed power to Lieutenant General Roberto Biola on the 29th of March 1981, amid growing economic problems and international isolationism. But Biola's government tried to rescue the economy with two currency devaluations that ultimately made the situation worse, and fears that Biola wanted to move back to civilian rule, coupled with him having a heart attack in November, prompted his forced removal by other members of the junta on the 11th of December 1981. He was replaced by interim president Vice Admiral Carlos Lacoste for 11 days, followed by Lieutenant General Leopoldo Galtieri, who became the 44th president of Argentina on the 22nd of December. Despite closeness with the Reagan administration, Galtieri's position was fairly weak. He began an initially popular military operation to take the Falkland Islands also known as the Malvinas Islands, an island group 900 miles away from Buenos Aires and 300 miles from the southern coast of Argentina, from the British, who had seized them in 1833, but were still considered by many Argentinians to be part of the country's legacy from Spain. The popularity the Falklands War gave Galtieri quickly soured when Argentinian soldiers who had invaded the islands surrendered to British forces and the capital, Port Stanley, came back under British control on the 14th of June, 1982. Four days later, Galtieri was removed by the junta and replaced by Major General Alfredo Sanjin, acting as an interim president until July the 1st, when the last leader of the junta was appointed, Reynaldo Bignone. Bignone faced an ever-growing financial crisis and called for democratic elections. He eased restrictions on the freedom of the press and speech in general, but this arguably only further destabilized the junta anti-government and anti-junta literature and demonstrations became rife. The economy, which many historians say was grossly mismanaged by the junta, had contracted by around 12% in the 18 months before Bignone took office. During his 18-month term, however, it grew by 4%, thanks at least in part to a replacing of the peso ley with the peso argentino. But even as economic reforms were happening, it seemingly became clear to Bignone that the junta could not remain in power indefinitely, as Galtieri had wanted. In preparation for transition to democracy, Bignone declared an amnesty for all those involved in human rights abuses on the 28th of April 1983. However, this was rejected by the succeeding democratically elected government, headed by President Raul Alfonsin, who, three days after taking office, began proceedings against the first three military juntas, but not the fourth, meaning Bignone escaped a 1985 trial which saw Bedella and Macera sentenced to life imprisonment, Biola given 17 years, and Galtieri acquitted, although a court-martial later found him guilty of malfeasance. 
of a mishandling of the Argentinian-British War. All of the Junta were pardoned by President Carlos Menem between 1989 and 1990. However, in 2005, the Argentine Supreme Court declared amnesty laws unconstitutional and the government resumed trials against military officers who had been indicted for actions during the Junta and what is often called the Dirty War internationally, but also referred to as state terrorism genocide in Argentina, which began in around 1974 under Perón, although some sources believe it began earlier. The period of extrajudicial activities heavily escalated beneath the rule of the Juntas and focused on secretly detaining, and usually killing, dissidents and opponents of the regime. Examples of activities mandated by the junta include dragging detainees and throwing them into the sea, staging attacks supposedly from leftist guerrillas in order to justify repression, and wide-scale torture. Because of its clandestine nature, it's difficult to cite an exact number of victims. Estimates range between 7,000 and 30,000. Bignone was arrested in March 2007 as part of an investigation into past human rights abuses and on the 20th of April 2010 he was sentenced to 25 years in prison for his involvement in the kidnappings, torture and murder of 56 people at Campo de Mayo. On April the 14th 2011 he was sentenced to life in prison for crimes against humanity. On the 29th of December of the same year Bignone received an additional 15-year prison sentence for his role in establishing a secret torture center in Posadas de Hayedo. On the 5th of July 2012, Bignone was sentenced to another 15 years for aiding a secret operation that took babies from parents detained by the military regime. On the 7th of October 2014, Bignone received an additional sentence of 23 years for his part in the kidnapping and torture of 32 factory workers. Most recently, on the 27th of May, Bignone was sentenced to 20 years in prison for crimes committed under Operation Condor. A 2015 UNESCO paper found that Condor had 376 known victims, although operations like Condor and surrounding it no doubt had many more. Operation Condor was this very finely focused, uh, very elite operation, intelligence operation, to track down the most important dissidents wherever they were right. in the world. It, it, they didn't kill tens of thousands of people in Operation Condor, uh, really the total is hundreds. But the people that they, that they tracked down and killed were the most important dissidents. Condor was a coordinated effort to eliminate opponents and leftists across the continent and beyond, and specifically to target the dissidents and exiles of participating countries who had fled to other South American states. The supposed dissidents were sometimes returned to their countries of origin, where they were usually killed. At other times, they were executed locally. The operation began in the mid-1970s, before Isabel Perón was overthrown in Argentina. And the key members were Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Paraguay, and Uruguay. But Colombia, Peru, and Venezuela also participated to varying degrees. Declassified documents show that the operation was known to United States intelligence agencies, and famed diplomat Henry Kissinger has personally been accused of being complicit in Condor's actions. Documents show that the US helped to organize and finance Condor, and although the operation officially ended when Argentina became a democracy again in 1983, similar operations continued to be conducted by other South American countries throughout the decade. US involvement has been publicly known for some time, but documents brought to light by the release of secret communications through WikiLeaks implicate it further. A leftist government led by Salvador Allende uh, installed a, a democratically elected civilian and revolutionary government in Chile, and that's why Pin and Pinochet overthrew that government. The United States was deathly fearful that this would spread in Latin America, and so supported the coming of dictatorships. When they began mass killings, the United States was aware of these mass killings. Uh, when they, uh, they learned of Condor shortly after it was created, there's no evidence that they knew about it the day it was created. Uh, the, the earliest evidence is a couple months after it began its operations. Uh, but they certainly knew these things were happening. And if you look at the, the meetings, the transcripts of the meetings between Henry Kissinger and these leaders, both in Argentina and in uh, Chile, where we have the records. What do they say in private? You know, we support what you are doing. Given the age 
of the leaders and organizers of Condor. It seems unlikely that many more will face justice before they die. So, until next time, goodbye and try to remain calm. <laughs>